Hey everybody, good morning. I know up in like a minute late because I've been doing my zoo. Hi mama. Hi mama. Huh? What? Amanda's leaving today because we Yeah I know. I love you. Mama, wait come say hi to my fans. I'm I'm live on Instagram. Can you say hi? No. Oh my gosh, she's so feisty. It's Women's Wednesdays. This is how this goes. You guys know I am okay. I think I'm gonna do okay now. I got some good service. I had to walk through my house to get to a good spot. Um, but today is Women's Wednesdays. Shout out to all my ladies out there. Hola, hola, people. What's up? Morning. She said no. Yes, Sienna said no. Hey, what's up, Italo? <laughs> Who else is in here? What's up, Brooke? Who else is on this joint today? Bombi, Bombay, Bombier, Bombay, uh, True1229, Hola, Hola. How's everybody doing out there? How's everybody feeling out there? So, you guys know I always pull up to Women's Wednesdays like about one or two minutes late. I literally just finished a Zoom class with Future. Um, he is getting close to ending school, so this is um, going to get even more interesting in quarantine because we know what that means. That means that we have to occupy our time that was being occupied with something to do. So I don't know about you guys, but um, we're still trying to figure it all out. Um, I feel a little bit better in quarantine because I feel like, um, you know, it's not this new thing it's this life has become the new norm um sometimes i do have little moments where i'm like a little like stir crazy or uh frustrated i'm like ah, i just want to do something more i was i was saying um to my friends how i contemplated taking um future and sienna stuffed animals and taking and putting them outside and acting like we're going to go on a safari ride <laughs> That's how crazy it's getting now. I'm like, what can we do to just keep the fun going? Um, ordering more pool floaties, just doing all kind of stuff to just like keep it interesting. Um, but nonetheless, as you guys know, um, this is Women's Wednesdays, our chance for us women to connect. I'm pulling up some of the questions that you guys asked. You guys submitted them to the Beauty Marks page. And um, as always, I like to um, chat about things you guys are thinking of and um i want to talk about and so today you know okay so there i'm gonna i'm gonna go through a couple of them but um i'll start with this first one um someone says here how do you let a best friend go who only causes you a headache um okay so i think last week i talked about this best friend thing and i'm just a big believer that your friends that are in your friend circle should share a very similar vision to the one that you have for yourself. Doesn't mean you guys aspire to do the exact same things in life, but the level of thinking, um, the level, the way that you approach life has to be aligned. Um, Russ and I always talk about being equally yoked in our marriage, and I think it's game changing when you and the person, when you and your partner or the person on the other side, um, you know, has uh, a very similar vision and and, and and philosophy to how you want to approach life. And um, I think that this idea kind of applies to even your friendships. Like you want to be equally yoked all around. Um, you want to um, have uh, just a great, uh, have a good a circle of friends that understand, um, understand you, you understand them so that when you guys do get frustrated or when you guys do have moments, you always can work through them because you, you're pretty much on the same page. So um, if someone is causing you a headache from like, stuff that has something to do with nothing if that makes any sense um then you most likely need to like kind of let that go um because friends that cause headaches is not a healthy relationship um somebody else asked another question um let me see here who's more firm with kids russ or me hmm i think it depends on the moment of 
Sienna, she's she gets him. I will tell you, Russ is like he's pretty tough. Um, you know, he's firm with love. I will say, um, but I think Sienna like she kind of gets him sometimes, uh, just a little bit. Um, and it's always cute to see that because he's like you know all about the principle, but then every now and then Sienna's like the great negotiator, and she gets dad really good. And I love, I just laugh. I laugh inside. And I'm smiling on the inside, like, mm hmm. That toughness kind of going out the door a little bit right now um, in those moments. Um, let me see. Uh, someone says, talk about what this stillness is like as someone who's been on the go for 15 years. What's going on with you mentally, and how will you get back to being busy after experiencing quarantine? So, this stillness is definitely. Um, been a I, I'm a homebody so I will say being at home is not really the most the craziest thing for me because I'm always on the go so I enjoy being at home in those moments but I think that being a homebody is one thing but being told to stay home is something else like now it's like you put something else on my whole like setup and flow and the fact that I can't go out and like eat you know, and just have like a normal, just like, just go have a date night or go have a lunch somewhere. Just go out and be in a different environment does kind of get a bit, um, challenging at times, honestly, frustrating at times. Um, you know, I just try to manage all of those feelings. So I don't want to let it like work me up so much that it just carries, I carry a weight with it throughout my everyday movement because that's not going to be healthy. Plus, I'm pregnant, so, you know, I want to have some good balance mentally for all those reasons, too. Um, but it definitely is a different feeling because I, I am used to moving and shaking. Luckily, I've been able to still keep working out, and um, I've been able to um, do a lot of me meetings through Zoom, um, which I think there's been a positivity. There's been a positive to that. Um, I think the positive to it is that you're not having to get on flights every other day. Because what I do now that I have kids and family, I would before when I was like, you know, younger and didn't have any responsibilities of any kind um, of any sort like that. I would, um, you know, such as family and kids, I would go to a place and be able to have a little grace period to hang out and like just kind of do, you know, um, whatever I wanted to do. And now for me, it's like I got to get back home. I got to get back home to my family. So I'll fly in and out to um, do work. And um, now I'm not having to do that as frequently as I was because I had a lot of meetings that would sometimes be on the East Coast in New York. I would have to fly back frequently. And that's a five hour flight, five hour to six hour flight coming from New York to Seattle. Um, and so I don't have to do that as much. So I, I'm actually um, appreciative for that reason. Um, and then also, uh, gosh, my question, went, the question went away. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so that's kind of been a positive. I think that's also kind of allowing us to be cost effective people with budgets. Um, you're not having to like, you know, be on, you know, fly as much, which can be a good thing, I think, for companies sometimes. Um, then it says here, what's going on with you mentally um, in this process? Mentally, I am okay, actually. I'm hanging in there. Um, I am definitely really focused on being positive as much as I can. Um, I will say that I always say the positive about this time of being still is I get to enjoy my time with my kids. Like I don't, I didn't get to normally spend this type of quality time with my family consistently. Like we kind of like Russ, Russ would be in football. He would literally be in training camp right now, which is always fun going to training camp. Um, actually this would be OTA. So I never go to, I don't go to, I don't really go to OTAs, but, um, or maybe I, go to a few of them when they open them up for family but basically what Russ would be doing is he'd be in I, he, yeah I'm like can I get my brain right he would be in training and um you know we would be seeing him for a decent amount of time during the day when I would be home and so now um we get like all day together and I just say he's stuck with me and I'm stuck with him um and but the quality time that we're having as a family is pretty amazing um, that's been probably by far the most, uh, valuable thing I could say that's come out of this and, um, you know, something that I really, really appreciate, uh, about this time. Cause I think you have to find like those simple things that you appreciate 
in this moment. Otherwise, you will go crazy. And um, I think that there is a silver lining to, to everything, as people would say. Um, and so this time, and I just continue, I'm just saying to God, like, what do you want me to hear in this time? Like, what am I supposed to understand from all of this? You know, how am I supposed to receive all of what's happening to us? And then, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's getting like even, a, it's getting a little bit more crazy because now there's like a continuation of the um, stay-at-home orders. And it's like, what does this mean? Like, okay, so how long is this going to go? You know, can they find a vaccine soon? Like, because I'm, I'm incredibly concerned about us going back into society without that a vaccine. I don't know about you all, but for me, I'm really concerned about that because I think it's just going to be a cyclical thing that's going to keep on going around and around and around. And um, it really concerns me, um, especially for me being pregnant, um, for my kids going back to school, um, you know, just all those things. Like so many different circumstances, I think, uh, will be affected um, by this. And so for me, I'm just trying to like, you know, fig- it's just like, I'm trying to, I, it's hard to even wrap your head around it because we don't have answers. Like, I think that's probably, you know, one of the craziest pieces to this puzzle. Like we just don't have answers. And I don't, I've never witnessed a time in my life that the world has been in this state. Um, you know, so that part is very interesting. And then someone says, how will I go back to being busy after quarantine? So, Um, I have breastfed all my babies and I plan to still do the same. I also plan to go all the way in on the body and get back, bounce back, uh, come back on one handed, as we say, level up. Um, I do plan to, you know, go and get my, um, I I plan to stay really focused, like on taking care of myself. Um, And there's some cool things that we have been working on, even though I'm doing doing them in Zoom sessions. There's been some really cool things that we've been um, uh, working on from a business uh, business standpoint that I'm excited to be able to actually get on the ground and do and promote and share. And so I'm excited about those things. You know, quarantine ain't going to stop no moolah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't going to stop no moolah. So that's been um, <clears throat> one of my focuses is just really making sure I'm maintaining my business um, at a high level and um, still doing my best that I can to achieve all my goals. So I've just been really, really... Um, you know, dead set on that and um, just staying focused, you know, you got to stay focused in this time. I think that's important. Like, you know, don't lose sight of what you really want to ultimately get to because this moment is going to pass. Um, and I think we have to be ready for when this moment passes. So let's not wait for it to pass us by, you know, let's actually be active. Let's actually put together game plans so that when we come out of this, we're going to be stronger than ever. Like that's kind of my mentality. Um, <clears throat> someone says, let me see here. This was interesting. Um, hmm. I'll come back to that one. <laughs> uh, all right. Now I'm going to open up the floor. For, uh, let me see. Maybe I'll go back to this one. No, actually, I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Um, this is always fun to see what you guys have to say. Um, how do you feel about all the 2020 events going on, especially being so early? within the year this is a good one how do you feel about all the 2020 events going on especially being so early within the year honestly this one is like uh i have a little bit of a mixed emotion about this piece of it all of coronavirus and quarantine because i understand that we all want to get out and like live and at some point i think that everyone's going to go a little more crazier (laughs) are going to go crazy if they haven't um Uh, you know so I think that I get that frustration I think the true frustration of it is all of it all is that again the unknown like going out is so risky um, so scary Um, not say it's unsafe Um, you know it's just it's so unfortunate right it's like this like weird place like because it's really out of our control and there's nothing we can do about it like so I think um, events happening like i don't know about you guys but i want some football um you know i see russ doing his virtual sessions but i really do look forward to the season and i'm praying that um you know we'll be able to see football it's so much fun in our house and it's so much fun you know watching russ go out there and do his thing and just the, the sport it's incredible so 
that'd be amazing. I know baseball was also kind of um, trying to sort through it all and um, basketball. So, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I just wish that there was some way we could really figure this out. Um, so I'm praying for that answer. I'm praying for that clarity <laughs> for organizations and even what people doing tours. Like, I don't know what that's going to be like for us as performers. Um, what is What does this mean for us with concerts? Like, it's a big, big mystery right now. Um, it's a big wonder, you know. So I think um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'll say that. It's going to be interesting to see when we'll get going again. How we'll do events now. Will they? Will we be standing like? Will we be in seats far, far apart from each other? Um, what is this going to all? What all? Is, what is this going to mean? So, I'm very curious. Um, all right, let's see here. Next question. I like this one. How do you feel about not being able to have a traditional baby shower? Um, well, you know what? I've accepted it. And um, well, I I um, looked forward to having the my friends come over and we do the co-ed baby showers. We like doing that and dancing and doing good music. The last baby shower we had Shake Shack at the sh at the shower. We danced. We had a DJ. We had a nice, beautiful tent that um, Russ, you know, put together for me. It was pr really beautiful. We did like hand print canvases where all of our guests put their prints on a canvas with paint and. Um, we just had a really good time. I remember Future dancing around, you know, me and my big old bump. It was a it was a really good time. So not being able to do that is definitely something that is a little bit of a bummer. But at the same time, um, I'm actually really looking forward to. I'm going to do a virtual baby shower with my friends. So um, that'll be fun. I, I honestly don't. I don't really need or want for anything. Um, I saved a lot of my hand me downs um, from from both Future and Sienna. And um, a lot of the new stuff, you know, um, I'll be able to have some fun with picking out new stuff for the baby. But um, luckily, I, I don't, I don't need it for, you know, I just need it for a good time. So I'm looking forward to doing a virtual shower with my friends, where we'll laugh and we'll, um, you know, guess the baby's name and all that kind of fun stuff. And maybe I'll send out a supply box to them, where they can like, um, or a game box to them, where they can like do fun stuff like within the time period on the um on our virtual baby shower we'll have some fun games and so that'll make that'll bring me joy um the most important thing to me is just having a healthy baby and um this so far is every so far everything's going good my bump is getting bigger i am gaining more weight but i'm still trying to stay away from my 200 pounds that i normally gain or 205 i gain with sienna uh, so i'm trying my best to do that and um just make the best of it all all right so Next question. Uh, when this is over, will you come to Brazil? Of course. Estou muito feliz de estar no Brasil. Hold on, let me see. How? You know where you. Okay, someone asked me this one. Want more kids? <laughs> uh, do I want more kids? Well, I always, I've always like thought in my mind like, cause, because of how much I love kids that I could probably make it to five kids. Um, but um, after being pregnant with my third child, I don't know about all that. <laughs> um, I think that if if it's in the plans that god has for me it will happen if you ask russ he will say that we're going to have eight kids and i don't even know how that would even happen it's not humanly possible over here um i, I would always say that he can carry the baby he'll be the one carrying the rest of the babies that we're gonna make it to eight i do love kids i think kids keep me young um they keep me going they keep me thriving they make me feel like i you know, they put the P in purpose. Of course, my family, my, my husband and my kids, they put the P in purpose for me. Um, my kids just give me like a special feeling. I feel like superwoman or super mom. I can feel like a, it's like a superpower. You get to really feel like the, the special gift that God gives you as a woman um, and being a mom and having kids. So um, I would say that um, 
I'm definitely down with having one more. But can I make it to five? I don't know. Um, but I'm not ruling it out. I do love, um, I love my babies. And thankfully, I don't have the craziest pregnancies. So, yeah. What's the next question here? How has this pregnancy compared to other pregnancies? Um, luckily for me, um, this pregnancy has been pretty easy. It's been pretty, pretty similar. Um, it's been very similar to my past ones. Luckily, in the beginning, I just, um, I do get most crazy morning sickness. Ugh. Um, with future, I threw up a few times. Um, I threw, threw up like probably 10 times. I can kind of remember it. Um, and that was it. And that was like for the first trimester. And then after that, I was out. I was like smooth sailing. Um, Sienna, I had morning sickness, but I wouldn't throw up, um, which was very frustrating. Ooh. Excuse me, guys. Um, being, being, um, having morning sickness and not being able to just get the, the that feeling off is like torture. It's like, I'd rather throw up than just have it sit there. Um, for future, I meant for this baby, <laughs> um, oh, you thought I was that? No, for this baby, I, um, basically, um, I've had morning sickness. I've had not like nausea, but I haven't been able to throw up as well. So that has been um crazy again um i was like wish i could throw up but that was in the first trimester and luckily after that it was smooth sailing for me um and so so far all of my pregnancies have been very much very they have, they've been the same first trimester is a little funky very tired i feel like somebody's like knocked me out um like so sleepy that i sleep so deep or i can just go to sleep like snap like a snap of a finger and so that has been um, you know, consistent. Um, and, but other than that, I've been very blessed that I have easy, um, pregnancies. So that's why I keep on saying, I'm like, I have amnesia, especially about the birth. Giving birth is like, never gets, never gets like, I actually can remember, I can remember the pain a little bit, but not probably the level of the pain. Um, I do remember I've gotten epidurals of both my babies and I do remember having um, my body just go through this crazy experience when I'm like about to have a baby. Like, um, I'll tell you guys about it more one day, but, but it's just like, you don't, I never will forget that feeling, but it goes so fast that you don't hold onto that, those, that pain um, or that moment that is just like, oh, like uh, taking so much out of you that you want to do it again. Um, so I have amnesia basically about all those little things that are, you know, uh, I wouldn't even say troublesome, but just kind of give you like, you know, it's, they challenge you a little bit in the pregnancy process. So, um, I've been very blessed. All my pregnancies have been pretty similar and they get very easy once I get into the second trimester and third trimester. Um, only thing I will say that's so funny is like how now I have two kids and I'm pregnant. So, and both of my kids are faster than me right now because I can't keep up with them. Like my pelvic bones on fire. Um, I feel like sometimes like my bones are literally going to split in half sometimes and I'm like running around trying to go after them. I'm like, I got to sit down. And sometimes when I sit down on a hard floor or something that's not so soft, it feels like it's just like my body is about to just like, it just hurts. <laughs> so, um, that's not fun, but I, I, I say I always say thank you Jesus. I just say thank you Jesus for this pain. Thank you Jesus for these feelings. The 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 result is always um, rewarding, and it's the sweetest blessing when you get to create new life. And I'm so curious what it's going to be like to have three kids. Like, what is that going to be like? Um, new little baby in the mix. Um, Future and Sienna are so ready. Um, you guys have to see Sienna has this new baby. I got her new baby doll. Me and Russ got her a baby that's like a little baby boy where it can pee and poop and cry and drink a bottle. And she's like, oh, no, the baby's crying. I mean, you, she wants me to make the baby cry. And then she wants to react dramatically. The baby's crying. Oh, no. She wants to feed him the bottle. Then she wants to hold him. She wants to see it pee and poop and change the diaper. So I know she's going to be ready to help me. Um, you know, when the baby comes, I have a feeling I'm going to have to be like Sienna, like 
hey, give me a moment, okay? Can you just give me a break? Let me do this. I think the same thing for Future, too. He's so ready. He's excited about being a big brother. Um, and um, it's just the cutest. They love my belly every day. They make me feel so good and so loved. So that's, um, that is really the best, uh, best feeling. So I'm excited for the new baby. All right, let's see. Here's the next question. What we got? Um, any weird cravings? Any weird cravings? Or that I used to have? Okay, so any weird cravings. So weird cravings for me, I would say... I just love carbs. Not a weird craving, but I really love carbs right now. I always love carbs, even when I'm not pregnant. That's just, that's just like, ugh, it's the death of me. Like, it's like so hard um, to not eat carbs. Oh, I'd be talking to myself. I'd be like, don't eat it. Don't eat the ice cream. Don't eat the pasta. Don't do this. And I just keep eating it. It's so frustrating because I can't help myself. I just love carbs. They're so good. They're so comforting. I'm going to eat some carbs right now. No, I was like, <laughs> but I love, I love carbs. Um, they're always, um, it's just, like I say, I can eat, like I can wake up and I'll do some cream wheat in the morning. Then I'll do, uh, for lunch, I'll have like something with some rice, like some turkey wings with gravy and rice and some yams or, I'll have a vegetable too, but I'm just kind of giving you like a carb rundown. Or I'll do like a pasta, like uh, an Alfredo, chicken Alfredo pasta with some cheddar cheese biscuits. Ooh, and then for dinner, I can turn around and I can do, uh, what can I do? I'll do, if I did pasta in the daytime, I'll turn around, I'll do something with rice. Like whatever it is, it's something with a carb. And um, I just can't help myself. i will be like, oh, Jesus. So this week, I'm actually trying to cut down my carbs. This week, I've decided that I'm going to do, um, I did have creamery this morning, so that's one. But then for lunch, that's my next carb. Actually, today, I decided to do a soup and salad because I'm like, I need some help. I need some help with these carbs. Uh, but I just, I went crazy. The pat Over the weekend, I had California Pizza Kitchen. I had Cheesecake Factory. I had... In and out Burger. I had Chick-fil-A. I mean, every meal was like carbs. And then I had a milkshake or two. See, this is the problem. This is when I start messing up right here in this stage where I start. I, I'll be saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Because this is how I get to 200 pounds. So I'm just trying not to do this, guys. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, so this week I decided to commit to cutting down the carbs. Um, a food that I eat that makes me that i used to that makes me sick now i don't like garlic like i like i used to like these garlic um sorry not garlic ginger i used to like these ginger chews that were like chewy and like sweet and they're supposed to help you with nausea and now i'm like ugh, i'm not a fan of ginger so much right now it has to be like really tucked in the food um to where you don't even really know that ginger's in the mix um so yeah all right what else we got who else we got Someone said my purse was ice cream and fries. I love some ice cream. I love some fries. I eat that now. Uh, do you ever imagine? Let me see here. Are you having more of that? Uh, all right. What advice would you give to expecting first-time moms during these chaotic times? I will tell you, baby girl, you can make it through this. You can make it through anything. That's what I do know about this quarantine. Um, I really believe that this is going to make us stronger, especially if you were experiencing anything that was challenging prior to walking into this. This just adds a whole other whole other layer of challenge. So I think that we have to like run towards it, and that you know embrace this moment and let this moment this like let it let this moment you know happen for us and um and we're going to come out stronger from this and i would say first time moms document these times um you know while it seems challenging there are it's a sweet moment having a baby is like one of the most joyful things you could 
it's one of the most, one of the most joyful moments you experience in your life. So you got to embrace it and, you know, really get lost in the, the, the sweetness that's happening within you. Um, and you'll have a lot of moments to come ahead. Trust me, like babies do something different every day once they get to a certain stage. So don't worry about feeling like you're missing out. I, I think you'll never forget this time of when you carry a baby during the era of COVID-19 and quarantine. Um, it definitely will be unforgettable. Um, you know, but don't worry. Um, you know, uh, keep on like interacting with your partner. Um, you know, they sing to the belly, talk to the belly, the baby moves. It's always fun. But document it. Don't worry. Your moments are going to, you're going to have a lot more moments to come when your baby starts walking and talking and all those fun things. So um, just hold on, be faithful, um, and, and, and get excited. Be excited because what you, what's happening within you is an incredible thing. And you're creating something so beautiful um, that's bigger than you. Um, and so, you know, get lost in that. Um, yeah. Document these times. All right, what else do we have here? Huh. You planning on... How is my quarantine? It's going good. Um... <laughs> Someone said, people say you have weird dreams when you're pregnant. I have some crazy dreams. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy dreams. And they feel so real. I mean, it'd be crazy stuff. Like, I'd be dreaming of stuff like I did something bad to someone. Like, the worst feeling. Because it feels like I really did, like... Like, it's, it's extreme. Like, it's so extreme that I'm like, I don't know if I want to say it. <laughs> but, like, I've done, like, some physically bad things to people, like, in my dreams. Um, and I'm just like, huh? I wake up like, thank you, God, that was a dream. Um, but it's the worst feeling. But the dreams that I have so, are so vivid. Like, it's weird. And this has always been the same thing that's happened to me every pregnancy. Every pregnancy. Um... I've always had really vivid dreams and I do bad stuff in my dreams to people. Not all the time, but I've, I have those kind of, I have bad, I have dreams, bad dreams sometimes. And I wake up thanking God that it was a dream because it feels so real and it's very, um, very, very um, frustrating. <laughs> Um, but I also like to watch like stuff like I watch the Ozarks and stuff. So, so you can kind of see what my dream goes. My dream goes kind of crazy. If I say the Ozarks, then you can kind of put it to put it together on how extreme my dreams get. And I go like, if some people did bad stuff like this, they have to feel terrible. Because then I sometimes have dreams that are connected to each other. Like I dreamed of something before and the story comes back up and it's like a saga, like the continuation of a dream. And I'm like... Then it feels even more real because then I feel like I did something, I really did something wrong and it still happened in my life. It's just crazy. Like pregnant, pregnant dreams are like bananas. Um, yeah, so I do. Um, but nonetheless, it is now 1020. I have to do a call to prepare for uh, Future's birthday coming up. His quarantine birthday, um, how he did for Sienna, which we did a quarantine birthday, and that was um, really sweet, very different. Um, never forget it, but she still felt like the party was full of a lot of people. She still felt like she had that energy of it being like a party that it would be if she wasn't in quarantine. So the goal is to do the same thing for future, and he's told us all the things that he wants. He only asked for three things, so he's going to have all those things. He doesn't know it. Um, but I'm using that. I'm like, if you stay on good behavior, then you'll get these, maybe get some things. So, uh, either way I have to get ready to go and, um, talk about that, but this has been fun. I hope you guys had a good time. I love women's Wednesdays. I know we had some conversations that were for, uh, or I talked about a lot of things that were for us and, um, I look forward to next women's Wednesdays. Okay. All right, guys have an awesome day. CC loves you. I'm signing out. Peace. Hello.